At the end of A Dance with Dragons and of Season 5 of Game of Thrones, Jon Snow is stabbed and seemingly killed by men of the Night's Watch. The men do this because Jon, as Lord Commander, brings thousands of wildlings south of the Wall. He tries to unite with them against the White Walkers and to save them from being killed and added to the army of the dead. But the Watch has been fighting wildlings for thousands of years and many brothers have deep personal grudges. They see wildlings as savages and fear they'll destroy the Watch or at least eat all their precious food come winter. Upset with all the bold changes John makes at the wall, they whisper that John is a rebel, a turncloak, and a traitor. The last straw in the books is when John announces a plan to ride south against Ramsay Bolton in Winterfell to rescue his half sister. That's when the brothers stab him for the watch. So it looks like Jon Snow is dead, and apparently not coming back. Game of Thrones is repeating a lesson they've taught us before good guys die. Ned gets beheaded, Rob gets red-wedded, Cat gets her throat cut. It seems like whenever someone tries to do the right thing in Westeros, they get screwed over by people like Littlefinger and Roose Bolton. This has been a pretty bleak season. King's Landing is run by bigoted zealots, creepy necromancers and fools, and Cersei is ruthlessly humiliated. Sansa is set up to be all empowered, but she just gets beaten down by the Boltons. Arya sets off for grand adventure and becomes a vicious, faceless assassin. Jamie tries to rescue Marcella, but he fails and she dies. Brienne tries to rescue Sansa, but she fails and all she achieves is the death of Stannis, who himself is kind of a good guy until he burns his daughter. Bran is forgotten beyond the wall, becoming a psychic tree boy or something, and gods know where Rickon is. It's not all bad with Daenerys when she's not burning innocent men alive, but she's still in Essos with no sign of going west anytime soon. In Westeros, it's like we're all out of heroes, all out of hope. The White Walkers look unstoppable, and at this point, some may welcome our new Ice Demon overlords. They're probably preferable to people like Littlefinger and the Boltons. Some people think Jon Snow's corpse will be added to the Army of the Dead, or be converted into a White Walker to lead it against the living. It feels like the bad guys have won. Game over. But Game of Thrones is not just a story of death and loss. The book series is titled A Song of Ice and Fire. There are two sides in this story. There is balance, there's hope, and in many ways, Jon Snow embodies it. In the show, he's been clearly set up in opposition to the darkness, to the leader of the White Walkers, apparently called the Night King. Surely you don't have an awesome standoff like this without a payoff later on. And Jon is central to many of the unresolved mysteries and prophecies of the series. R plus L equals J, a very popular and well-supported theory, claims that Jon Snow's parents are not Ned Stark and an unknown woman, but Ned's sister Lyanna Stark and the Targaryen prince Rhaegar, which has a lot of big implications, including maybe giving Jon a claim on the throne. The prophecy of Azor Ahai states that certain signs herald the coming of a hero of the Lord of Light, someone to drive back the White Walkers in the Long Night. Melisandre believes that Stannis is this hero, but evidence suggests it may actually be Jon. However you look at it, Jon Snow has unfinished business in Westeros. He may be this hope that seems to be missing from the story. So is there any way he can come back and finish what he started? The answer may be Melisandre. We know from Beric Dondarrion and Thoros of Myr that red priests can bring the dead back to life. We've never seen Melisandre resurrect anyone, but in the books she says her magic is becoming stronger at the wall, and that she can do things that she has never done before. And in the show, Melisandre visits Thoros of Myr, maybe comparing notes on resurrection, so it's totally reasonable to think that Melisandre may be capable of bringing the dead back to life, and she does take a definite interest in Jon. In the books, Melisandre foresees his stabbing, warning Jon of daggers in the dark, and telling him that he'll have grave need of her that she's his only hope. In the show, she says some interesting things about her joining with Jon having power to make life and light, and she turns up at the wall conveniently in time for his stabbing. Melisandre's actress, Carice Van Houten, has strongly hinted that something's going to happen between Melisandre and Jon after Jon's stabbing. All this evidence makes it seem very likely that Melisandre resurrects Jon Snow, but there may be a cost. We're told over and over that only death can pay for life, and Dance specifically emphasises that Melisandre needs King's blood to perform her magic. There's this whole subplot about Jon sending Aemon Targaryen and Mance Raider's son with Sam and Gilly down to Old Town, 
because Amon has the blood of Targaryen kings and Mansa's son has the blood of the king beyond the wall, so John fears Melisandre will want to burn them. But there's still someone left at the wall with king's blood, Shireen Baratheon, daughter of King Stannis. Melisandre might burn Shireen to resurrect John. In the show, Melisandre has already burned Shireen to clear the snows slowing Stannis. She comes to the wall soon after, so maybe in the show she's still juiced up with King's blood magic child sacrifice power. In the books at least, it seems pretty likely that Melisandre will use the sacrifice of Shireen to resurrect Jon Snow. Jon's resurrection may also involve skin changing, which the show calls warging. Warging is the ability to enter the mind of an animal, like Bran enters the mind of his direwolf Summer. The Three-Eyed Crow tells Bran that if he dies, part of him would remain in Summer. In the prologue of Dance, a wildling warg, Faramir Sixkins, tells us that when a warg dies, they can live a second life by warging into their animal after death. And in the prologue, Varamir does this. He dies, but lives on in his wolf. Varamir also specifically tells us that Jon Snow is a powerful warg, and that living on in Jon's direwolf ghost would be a second life worthy of a king. Jon definitely is a warg, though he resists it. He accidentally enters the mind of Ghost a bunch of times, and this connection with his wolf grows stronger in dance. John says Ghost is a part of him, that he and Ghost are one, just like Bran says he and Summer are one. Melisandre urges John to embrace this power, and tells him he'd do well to keep his wolf close beside him. At the end of the book, after John is stabbed, his last word is Ghost. Finally, Melisandre has a vision of John changing from a man to a wolf to a man again. In the show, Ghost hasn't been seen for a while, and there's been none of this skin-changing foreshadowing, so maybe in the show, John will just be straight up resurrected by Melisandre. But in the books, at least, this evidence strongly suggests that on his death, John walks into his direwolf Ghost, and later becomes a man once more, probably via resurrection by Melisandre, with the sacrifice of Shireen. This resurrection fits really well with the mysteries and prophecies surrounding Jon Snow, if R plus L equals J is true, and Jon is the son of Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, Jon has some claim on the Iron Throne. In his vow to the Night's Watch, Jon swears to wear no crown, but his vow says his watch ends with his death. Jon does die, so he's surely freed of this oath, allowing him, after his resurrection, to once more take part in the politics of Westeros, and perhaps to make a claim on the throne. This gives new meaning to Varamir's statement that a second life in Ghost would be worthy of a king. John's resurrection also fits with the prophecy of Azor Ahai. Melisandre is starting to realise that the prophesied hero of the Lord of Light is not Stannis, it's John. There's this moment in the show where you can see it in her face, when she realises she's been supporting the wrong guy all this time. In Dance, Melisandre prays for a glimpse of Azor Ahai, and her god Rollor repeatedly shows her Jon Snow. It looks like John is Azor Ahai, and this resurrection helps him fit the prophesied signs. It's said that sacrifice may be required for the rebirth of Azor Ahai, and the sacrifice of Shireen could fulfill that. Other signs of Azor Ahai include smoke and salt, which may be provided by the smoke and the tears of Shireen's burning. Further, Melisandre goes on and on about using King's blood to wake dragons from stone. Maybe the King's blood is Shireen's, the stone is Shireen's grayscale, her stone-like skin condition, and the dragon is John Targaryen. You might think that's kind of a lame symbolic fulfillment of Mel's waking dragons from stone, but it's actually very, very similar to something George R. R. Martin has done before in his novella The Mystery Knight. In this story, there's a prediction that a dragon will be born, and what this ends up referring to is the symbolic emergence of the young boy Egg as a true Targaryen, Prince Aegon. And when you also consider that Melisandre admits that she sometimes misinterprets her prophecies and visions, and that they can often be symbolic in nature, it seems totally possible that Melisandre's talk of waking dragons from stone means the rebirth of Jon as a Targaryen with the sacrifice of Shireen. Some people go further with this idea, suggesting that after being resurrected, Jon will sentence Melisandre to death for the crime of killing Shireen. We know that Ned always told his sons and Jon that the man who passes the sentence should swing the blade, so Jon would kill the fire priestess with his Valyrian steel sword, Longclaw. Maybe, if he does this, the sword will take on her flame, becoming Azor Ahai's prophesied flaming sword, Lightbringer. This is just speculation, but if it all happens, it would fulfill almost every sign of the prophecy of Azor Ahai, and would neatly tie together a whole bunch of plot threads.
One more possibility is that when John dies and his spirit enters ghost, he will have a vision that reveals R plus L equals J, the truth of his parentage. In the Dance with Dragons prologue, when Varamir is dying and about to begin his second life in his wolf, he has this moment where his spirit becomes one with nature, and he looks out through the eyes of a weirwood tree. Maybe John will have a similar experience when he dies and begins his second life in his wolf. The reason why this is important is that Bran Stark is taught by the three-eyed crow to do the same thing, to leave his body and become one with nature, and to see through the eyes of weirwood trees. When Bran does this, he has visions of the past, of Ned and other Starks and others further back in the past. So if, when John dies, he experiences being one with nature in the weirwoods, as Varamir does, Bran, who is also on the Weirwood network, might share with John his visions. This might sound unlikely, but it's actually already happened. In A Clash of Kings, John has a wolf dream, a warging dream, featuring a Weirwood with his brother's face. This tree boy figure, representing Bran, gives John a vision of Mance Raider's wildling army. So yeah, we've got a bit of an inception visions within dreams plus possible time travel sort of thing happening here, but the important point is that Bran can give John visions by connecting with him through the warging greensight weirwood network thing. So if John becomes one with the weirwoods when he dies and enters his wolf, just as Varamir does, it would totally be possible for Bran to give John a vision, just like he does in Clash. And since Bran's visions can see into the past, maybe Bran will give John a vision of his real parents, Rhaegar and Lyanna, possibly of the secret marriage they may have had at the Weirwood Grove at the Isle of Faces. With John's death, he may learn the truth of his birth. Again, this is just speculation, just an idea, but it would make a lot of sense. It would explain why George R. R. Martin has John enter the mind of his direwolf before returning to his body instead of just being resurrected by Melisandre and it would give a plot purpose to all this weird entering the weirwood stuff that's associated with the second lives of wargs, and it would finally reveal R plus L equals J, which doesn't really have any other way of being revealed unless Howland Reed decides to finally arrive. And how cool would it be? This guy not only gets brought back from the dead, released from his vows, fulfilling an ancient prophecy of the rebirth of a hero, but is born again with the knowledge of his true identity, as John Targaryen. It's all very biblical. A man of kinda mysterious birth goes around saying some sensible things about loving thy neighbour, like making peace with the wildlings, but he gets betrayed and killed by his friends, before a cross. Like, don't tell me that's not a cross. And he stays dead for a bit, but then is reborn as a divine hero. So, yeah, in conclusion, Jon Snow is Game of Thrones Jesus. Or at least, there's evidence that Jon Snow will return, and that the next book is gonna be a hell of a raid. Let's end there. For the evidence that Jon is the son of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen, check out the R plus L equals J video. For a discussion of the Azor Ahai prophecy, check out the Azor Ahai video. For an explanation of magnetoencephalography, check out the MEG video, cause uh, yeah, why not, right? It's about brain imaging, it's got mind reading and robo hands in it, you might like it. Thank you for watching. Feel free to comment what you think will happen to Jon Snow, and what topic you'd like to see explained next.